God is good, and today, guys, we're going to talk about the Waylanders RPG. And this is a really exciting RPG that's slipping under a lot of people's radar, and I want to tell you about it because it's coming very soon, we think, anyway. Before we get started, though, guys, if you're new here to the Nathan Napalm channel, please consider subscribing, especially if you're interested in RPGs, MMORPGs, especially the old school kind, and all that kind of thing because that's what we do here. So first of all, let's go through some of the features of Waylanders. First of all, as you see right here on the screen, it's got a really cool art style. As a matter of fact, it, it kind of feels like a tabletop kind of like, it's kind of like it's got that kind of feel like it was actually painted by somebody or something like that. Very artistic, very stylized. I like it. I First up, graphics look pretty cool, but let's talk about some of the features that this game has. It makes it pretty exciting. We got time travel. There's two distinct eras. There's the Celtic and the Medieval eras, and you, pl you choose between those two, but when you do something in one era, it's changes what happens in the other one so it has a lot of multiple playthroughs and decisions and different ways to affect the two eras and all that kind of thing and it looks awesome and a cool little gimmicky kind of thing to kind of make it stand apart from everything else the story this story was written by some acclaimed script writers let's take a look at them first up we have emily grace buck who's got a great track record with over a dozen video games under her belt uh let's give some examples here we got batman the enemy within episodes two through five batman the, the telltale series one through four Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series episode 2 and 4, and The Walking Dead, Michonne, amongst others. Another is Chris Avalon, and he is known, you ready for this, for Planescape Torment and the Fallout series, including Fallout New Vegas, and many others. And thirdly, we have Mike Laidlaw, and this guy comes from Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2, so they know their RPGs. These a really good team here for the writers, uh, and that makes it very exciting for a lot of people. Next up, the music. The music is by Emmy Award winner, three times nominee, and Fallout's main theme composer, Enan Zur. And that's also pretty cool, right? Fallout, I think, is known for having some pretty cool music. And uh, there we go. Looks like they've snagged that guy up. So this is a team of people, basically what I'm trying to say, that is known for high-quality work. Now, I know the Fallout series recently maybe is taking quite a bit of a punch, but we're not talking about the new one. We're talking about the elder versions of Fallout back when we all thought it was cool. This game has multiple endings, so choices that you make, like we said earlier, affects the different time period and has consequences in the other one, meaning that you, the player, are going to feel the impact of your decisions in all kinds of ways. Also, strategy and innovation. We're talking about unique formations for tactical combat. We're talking about party-based combat, okay? We're talking about party-based, like, think Neverwinter Nights or something of that nature. Like, we don't get a lot of those, right? There's not a lot of games that give us that kind of party-based combat, and that's something this game is going for. Now, this game is also going for a full character customization. So, six basic and 30 advanced classes, five playable races based on the Celtic mythology and other origins for your character. And once again, that art style for the characters, I think looks pretty cool and will hold the test of time in my opinion. And then we gotta talk a little bit about the companions. So companions are obviously such a huge part of RPGs. And this game, Waylanders, offers a variety of traveling companions that join you on your journey. So you'll be able to talk to the companions in depth, discover their past and stories, play loyalty missions, and even experience romances with them. It feels very Mass Effect kind of feel, which is no big surprise surprise since we have some of the people from those games developing this game. Let's take a look at some of the classes that are going to be in this game. First up, we have the Warrior. This is a close range damage. Not so much though about defense though, as you might think from MMOs of a Warrior. More about the damage. They dual wield heavy weapons and of course they're known for throwing their opponents across the field of battle. Some of their features are dual wielding, heavy weapons, short range, and melee. Next up, we have the Guardian. The Guardian if you want to be a tank, if you want to defend your party, Guardian is for you, but not to say they don't do some damage, they do. So, wielding a sword and shield, or a, I'm sorry, a shield and a heavy weapon, you can draw the attention of enemies, so you can provoke or that kind of thing. Uh, for tanking, you can stop their attacks, you can pave the way for your allies to finish them off. So, their features are, for the Guardian, shield, heavy weapons, tank, and melee. Next up, we have the Rogue. 
So if you like those assassinations and disappearing and reappearing at will, stealth type gameplay, or you just like to stab things right in the back, the rogue is for you, of course. They create distractions, they unleash lethal close range blows to finish off enemies quickly and silently, and their features are daggers, temporary damage, mobility, illusion, and lethal execution. Next up, we have the ranger. So if you like that ranged combat with bows, or you like to train animals and pets to fight with you, the ranger is for you. So by they stay out of the action, allowing you to focus on assessing an enemy's weak points and attack them with accuracy in order to inflict critical damage. The ranger features are long range weapons, pets, and critical damage. Next up, we have the sorcerer. So if you like massive DPS, just absolutely wrecking your enemies with magic, the sorcerer is probably for you. They use lethal spells on individual enemies, cast incantations that cause havoc across large sloths on the battlefield, so AoEs, and they bend reality to get themselves out of the way of attacking enemies. So sorcerer features are destruction magic, area attack, and heliport. Next up, we have the healer. So, of course, if you want to use your magic in order to help others, you might want to play as a healer, call upon the aid of spirits of the earth in order to provide the companions with defensive or offensive buffs, or to use the same spirits to deep up your enemies. When your companions companions have been attacked, you cast spells to heal them, of course, and of course to remove debuffs. So the healer features are healing and protection, buffs, and debuffs. Now there's also going to be some advanced classes too, like I said, around 30 of those, and I'm not going to cover every single one of those, of course, in this video, but just know that what I just covered is the basic, and then there are advanced classes beyond that. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some of these races, right? So, it's got a few races to pick from when you're creating your character. We have the Fomorian, which is a race of monstrous giants that have been in exile for thousands of years, biding their time, waiting for that opportunity to retake their homeland. Really cool looking race, very interesting, very unique. Next up, we have the Morian. They're an immortal race. They have dark skin, golden eyes and they seem to enjoy fate-based magic and intellectual pursuits. Although they used to live with humans and the other surface dwellers, most of them have joined communities of their own in the underworld. They're known for being elegant, for being wise. In most games, this description sounds like an elf, but they kind of remind me of a dwarf. Very unique, very cool. Then we have the werewolf. Part human, part wolf. But instead of the transformation happening dur during a full moon, they maintain their ferocious appearance at all times. You can't become a werewolf, they're born that way. And although their descendants come from the Tuatha, unlike the Tuatha, the werewolves are mortal. And some of them look almost completely human, but with a bit more fur and paw-like hands. While others are completely indistinguishable from humans and look like a wolf. But they do have the intelligence of a human, and they have become an accepted part of society. Then we have the goblin. Now this is a really cool looking creature here. Now, they're known for looking cute and playful, but you better beware because this is a very magical race that can cause a lot of pain, a lot of damage, because and they're known for doing pranks and having no empathy. They'll do whatever they think is interesting and whatever they think is entertaining without a thought for each other or for anyone else. Because of this, they become a favorite adventurer in a party, but rarely find themselves welcome in polite society. And it is popular for humans to claim that they have a resident goblin whether they actually do or not. Now you may notice that they're wearing a mask that is to convey their emotions and personalities and they never speak. It's actually unknown if they even can speak at all. Then of course we have the humans. So most common race of the people and they are also the most diverse. There is no one human culture or way of life. The Celts for example are the main human race representing the Waylanders. But as the seat of a thriving empire with trade routes extend well beyond the continent of Europe, this world has always been home to people of many different beliefs, nationalities, races, and ethnicities. And humans are known to have a stronger loyalty to their place of origin, culture, and or religion religion than to the race as a whole. And let's just Let's just be honest, they're humans. You know about that, okay? So that's the races of the Waylanders, and pretty cool, man. I gotta say, out of all these, the Goblin and the Fomorian, man, those are really unique. I'm, they're cool. I typically just pick a human, and I like to party up with all the crazy different races, but I don't know, man. It's pretty cool races, so you get to be the judge in your game of what you want your main character to be, and of course, I would assume that with your companions, you'll get a variety of options as far as some of these cool races and what which ones you want 
want to be in your party. Now we talked a little bit about the game being tactical, right? Now everybody wants to claim that their game is tactical, so I kind of get it if you want to kind of roll your eyes when, when I say some of these things, but let's talk a little bit about what we know about why this game's tactical. Not only because of the different classes and then the advanced classes and all the abilities. From what I've read, there's over 800 different skills and abilities uh, in the game, so not only do you have a lot of tactility with that, but also because there are formations that you can get your group in. So there's different formations for different types of combat or what you're trying to accomplish or do or how you're trying to fight and it also will depending on different formations might change you know how fast the combat's going to be right so are you are, is it going to be slower paced because it's going to be more kind of spell casting and stuff like that it's going to be very fast you know all the formations kind of help you decide that and there's a ton of them to do such as the phalanx uh there's one called the orb or the arrow formation there's 12 different formations in the game which changes the way that the battle is approached so that is why mixed all those things together while why this game i believe is going to have a very deep and very tactical gameplay now this game is coming to steam at the time it's recording there is no exact planned release date however it is slated to come out this year and i really don't hear enough people talking about this game so i definitely wanted to make a video and kind of tell you the basics of what this game's all about so that you can make a informed decision if this is the kind of game that you're interested in i do feel like that my audience loves a good tactical rpg and that's definitely what this game is going, to, I believe, to turn out to be with a lot of replayability, multiple endings. You know, you'll be jumping from era to era, and as you go back to the other one, things you've done in the previous area will affect the one you go to and vice versa. And I think this game's going to be really cool. Really like the art style. I think that it has a really good team behind it. And even though it was kickstarted and it's kind of an indie kind of project, we have some AAA developers on the team, and it looks awesome. And don't forget that games such as Divinity Original Sin, which are fantastic games, were also indie projects. And this is definitely beginning to feel like that, that Larian Studios kind of feel of high quality. And I hope that is true, and of course I'll cover this game in the future, any major developments, but I think that from this video you probably have a pretty good understanding of what the game is all about and what it's going for and its features. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this game. Are you excited about it? Have you already heard about it? Am I the first person to tell you about it? All that kind of thing, leave that in the comments down below. And of course, if you're not already subscribed, please consider to do that. Especially if you love RPGs, CRPGs, JRPGs, MMORPGs, especially the old school kind like Pantheon, Rise of Fall, and EverQuest, all that kind of thing. And until next time, guys, God bless and happy gaming. Please listen to what I say. I've been making videos all day. My friends all say I'm. It's a video buffet, you can even hit replay, but please just subscribe, I can't even describe, being part of my tribe, I'll even offer you a prize, but just please just subscribe, and hit the bell notification too.